G3 Santa Cruz's first uh, showcase event. So I had no idea when we started this back in January that it was going to get as big as it did, but I'm glad it did, and I'm glad that you guys all came. I know a lot of you guys traveled a long way to be here. You know, Jeff just drove four and a half hours this morning. Aaron flew in from Phoenix, Arizona. A lot of you guys came in from over the hill. So thank you very much. I appreciate it. I'd also like to take this time to thank more names than I can list, but particularly Jordan, Josh, Glenn, a couple other guys you know your names, who all stepped up and contributed terrain or tables or a lot of other hard work that went into this. This is seven months of planning and preparation, and I know a couple of us pretty much suspended 40K Army building for the last six months just to get this stuff done. So I really appreciate all their help as well. Um, what I really want to start with is sort of some of the crunchy, hard stuff that Jeff likes so much, and then we'll get into the fluffy stuff uh, going forward. Um, so when we're playing today, we have three separate tables. They're all part of the same battle theater going on at the same time. These two tables here are the planet side table, and then that's the spaceship in orbit above known as the Relentless Despair. All the details of that will come out soon. Um, what will be important for you guys to note, and you all have these sheets attached to your uh, handouts that everybody's going to get. Um, but we have what are called battle zones. On the basic tables, just imagine a four foot grid. You get your four foot block. Um, the ones on the Relentless Despair are a little more specific. The key to the battle zone concept is mostly in deployment. When you're deploying, you have to deploy within your battle zone. You cannot initially deploy all over the table. These are team games, it's not an apocalypse game. You can intermingle with your friends, but the rule is twofold, and it's all written here, but I'm going to tell you guys anyway that you can read this for a refresher. You may move into, and even later in the game, deploy into an adjacent battle zone, but you cannot come in to a non-adjacent battle zone. So if you're on the right end of a table, you cannot bring models in on the left, even though it's a team game, because if you can't reach them, you can't play with them. And we're not going to slow the game down so somebody's going back and forth. But however, if your ally on that far end of the table is really in dire need of your assistance, you can cede command of your models to them. And <laughs> if you are operating in a battle zone to either your left or right, and those models now are out of reach and it would be hard for you to play with them, again, you can cede those models to your, to your ally to your left or right. Uh, and that's just mostly to keep everybody from getting in each other's way. Um, additionally, uh, everybody's going to re receive a reinforcement token today. I've got poker chips to hand out to everybody. Reinforcement tokens are going to allow everybody to bring an additional unit that has been destroyed back into the game later. <coughs> For the planet side tables, those are troop choices only. For the relentless despair table, it's any infantry unit. Now what's important with those, and this is why I had you guys all bring a secondary HQ. The first time you use a reinforcement token, that secondary HQ comes in with the unit that's coming in. So you get both him and a replacement unit. And that's how those will work. Um, last, oh, in addition, there's a couple of key terrain features, one on each of the main tables, and two on the Relentless Despair that create special effects during the game. It's important that you guys understand that these are interconnected games. So the special effects, which I'll reveal when it's time to reveal them, don't affect your table. They affect your allies. Both these planet side tables, their effects affect the starship in orbit. All the special effects that are originating from the Laurentless Despair come down and affect the tables on the board. So you're not just fighting for yourself when you're defending those special objectives, you're fighting for the other battlefields as well. Um, the last thing I wanted to cover before we go into the fun, fluffy stuff. Um, in addition to these special effects and these battle zone rules and all that, I have listed on here some like key terrain for certain areas. It's all listed in here. Oh, should I be not blocking that? Um, <laughs> so you, you want to read through this. Uh, if the key terrain is not covered in here, not described, that's between you and, and, the, and your opponent in your battle zone. You guys can just decide on your own. A lot of this stuff is wiggy, WYSIWYG. It should be really easy to understand what it is, whether it's a ruin or a bunker. If it's not described, go with it. Work it out with your opponent. Um, also, we have players of all skill levels and all experience levels here today. We have painters of all skill levels and all experience here today. But the one thing that matters is that we have a good time. Take your time. 
pace these games. And that doesn't mean play slow, but the key is each side, each team of three, and there's teams of three on each table, your turn is together. So all of you will do movement before you move on to the next phase, et cetera, et cetera, down the line. So the key is if you're consistently the guy holding up any phase, be cognizant of that. But also, if you're the guy waiting for everybody, be cognizant of that as well. We're not really on a time limit today. We're here till 9 o'clock if we need to be. I don't want to be. I don't think any of you want to be. But the, the key is, is we're not on a time limit. Um, so take your time. Sixth edition is new to a lot of people. You're going to have to talk through a lot of stuff. But this is a friendly first game. We are not here to compete. We are here to tell a story. And that's the one thing why all of you guys are here today, is because you guys are all here to help tell a story. It's not about win or lose, beat face, it's telling that story. We've been running this campaign when we had time between projects this whole year, and Josh and I played the majority of the battles, but Jordy, uh, Jody and Glenn and Ross even, and, I mean a lot of the local guys have actually contributed to those battles, Mike. And um, now this is the crescendo though. We've built the story, that's what I'm gonna tell you when we go to the fluffy stuff, and today we have the resolution. You guys have all seen this, this is what we're playing out today. Next slide. All right, this is where we are at within the galaxy. This is the Gothamo sector. Anthony created the Gothamo sector as a campaign setting for his ongoing narrative campaign that's been going, what, 10 years now? Over 10 years. There you go. So we have segued and branched out on that campaign here for Santa Cruz. That's why G3 Santa Cruz. Overall, it's the Gothamus Gaming Group, but we're the Santa Cruz branch. So within that zone, you have these. That's the sector. These are the subsectors. Chaos is fighting within the Saturn subsector and the Goth March. That is the mainline story that Anthony runs. It's been going for many years. It's a big, hard, broiled war. And we are playing in the Benito subsector, which is a bunch of sissies that basically don't want to be involved in any of this. Next slide. This is the Benito subsector. You can see the master system there marked on the map. That's where this is taking place. What happened is there was a large battle on one of the main planets in the Gothmark subsector. And uh, it's called Calfax, and it was a shrine world, right? Shrine world. Right. And uh, it was completely destroyed by chaos, and it was turned into a demon world. And before it was turned into a demon world, there's a mass exodus of ships fleeing. And when these ships fled, the chaos guys started hounding and pursuing them. The ship, the Relentless Despair, was one of those wolf pack ships. It was badly damaged in a fight with the Dark Angels. It went into warp to get away from things, and just happened to show up here. Pure coincidence, not planned at all. Next slide. <laughs> this is the solar system we're in. Mesa Primaris is the planet we're fighting on, second from the sun. It's nothing but a mining world. It's not a big deal. Next slide. It's smaller than the Earth, but it's all landmass. It's a, generically a mass strip mining operation. It's a backwater world in a backwater sector that would mean nothing to anyone except for the Adeptus Mechanicus have a secret facility on this base. And when things started to go south, they called in help. Next slide. So this is the Mestra incursion timeline. Timeline. Um, I've reduced it. If you guys get on the web page, you guys can see the whole thing. And what it does is it starts from the fall of Calfax and runs through all the sequence of events that led up to today. Um, battles that were fought, behind the scenes activities. Uh, those of you that took the time to read them, you'll know that I sent out a lot of communiques between some of the background characters. Those guys will never see a battlefield. Those guys were designed specifically to build a narrative. Uh, so some of them are in here, like the planetary governor. So as you'll see, uh, the fall of Calfax, as I described it to you, and then the Mesra incursion began 88 days ago. 88 days ago, this chaos warship, damaged and dying, came into the system. Go ahead. And what happened was, when it arrived, there was a call for help sent out by the planetary governor, and it was ignored. The subsector governor was like, I don't care, you're not important, and I'm not reallocating assets. He's terrified that the war will spill over and he'd lose his capital, left these guys on their own. The planetary governor, in desperation, he rolled over and started recruiting pirates and Xenos mercenaries. Those are what I played represented by the Tau. 
Uh, so during this whole period, though, the Adeptus Mechanicus do not talk to the planetary governor. He tries to contact them. He's like, hey, all of our planetary defenses are down. This place has been neglected for years. We need help. And the Adeptus Mechanicus ignore him. And they continue to ignore him the entire time. So eventually, in desperation, as, as things build up, he brings in the Xenos mercenaries, and then demonic outbreaks start to appear. And as these demonic outbreaks appear, with the relentless despair in orbit, a small warp anomaly begins to grow around the ship. And at first, when the demonic, uh, when the demonic attacks begin, they're random, and nobody knows what they're doing and what they're about. And so they just react with these Xenos mercenaries, who get slaughtered again and again. Thank you, Josh. <laughs> But then, at this point here, the Aquarius Hydro Refinery was attacked. This planet is permafrost, so there's no flowing water. They have to refine all their water on the system. All of a sudden, this hydro refinery gets attacked and destroyed by demons, and it's the first time it feels like a coordinated attack. At this point, the Adeptus Mechanicus realized there have to be Chaos Space Marines on the ship. There's no way that demons would make an attack like this. It's too tactical, too strategic of a move. Because as soon as that fell, all of the mining operations on the Sasoso Plains were dying of thirst. They had no more resources for water. And a mass exodus begins. All the miners, all the settlers start moving toward the capital. What the people of the planet don't realize is this was chaos. This was intent. So as a, all these guys go toward the capital, the governor freaks out, brings the Xenos in to the capital. And a total blood fest begins as the demons move into the capital. Behind the scenes, unknown to the governor, unknown to the populace, Chaos Marines are making surgical raids during this entire time. As these demon attacks are catching all the attention and getting all the battles, they're gathering resources to repair their ship. They're, they're stealing servitors. They're grabbing fuel supplies. They're grabbing ammunition stores. And they're taking all this back to the ship. Only no one but the Chaos side knows this. Eventually, the entire city starts to burn as more and more demonic outbreaks occur. The Xenos mercenaries get killed again and again. Finally, the planetary governor pulls the most elite of the Xenos, the most loyal of the Xenos mercenaries that get paid the most money, back to the planetary governor to hold their ground and leaves the city to burn. Next slide. At this stage, the Dark Angels come in. Uh, the Adeptus Mechanicus, while all this was going on, was not silent. They were in contact with the powers of, of the uh, War Council in Gothamos, and they were calling for aid. And they wanted Adeptus to start these in specific. They did not want Imperial Guard regiments. They only wanted Space Marines to come. Why, no one knows. So the Dark Angels were the first to arrive, which is not a coincidence. The Dark Angels were after the runs despair. They were the ones that damaged it in combat. So they were the ones that were the first to arrive. But instead of attacking the relentless despair, their first move is to attack the governor's palace. They kill the governor, wipe out the Xenos mercenary, and purge their taint from the capital city. Then they align themselves with the rest of the Imperial defenders, move into the Fabrica Industrial District where the Adeptus Mechanicus are. And then that's where they begin setting up the defensive line. That's where we're playing today. So at this stage, all the other Space Marine chapters have arrived. They've made Planetfall. They've teamed up with the Dark Angels in the Fabrica Industrial District to guard the Adeptus Mechanicus facilities and their zone of control. While that's set up, everything starts to go silent from the relentless despair. Demonic incursions start to go down. Battles start to cease. But the warp anomaly continues to grow and grow and grow until it reaches the stage where it's actual a minor warp storm above the planet. So, in addition to defending the planet, the Adeptus Astartes decide to make the move, and with the help of the Adeptus Mechanicus command post, they are able to figure out a way to navigate teleportation through the warp anomaly, and they're doing a boarding action on relentless despair. So the intent is to hold the industrial district and the Adeptus Mechanicus facilities while simultaneously doing a boarding action on the ship and destroying it. Now, what's interesting is the warp anomaly does not actually make warp travel around the relentless despair more unstable, it makes it more stable. And that's what the Adeptus Mechanicus were able to uh, track. Next slide. 
So there's our map, there's where we're at. All the red zones are areas that were destroyed during the demonic incursions. All of the explosions are places where there was major engagement. Most of those engagements were either with Xenos mercenaries or the conscript militias that were able to attempt to defend. Eventually those conscript militias were regulated to guerrilla combat. The only engagements that have had the Astartes involved are in the blue zones and at the governor's palace where they destroyed the governor. Now here is the two sections. This is, these are all the battle zones that we'll be playing on today. As far as planet side, these are the battle, battle zones on the relentless despair. I'm going to start assigning them and you guys can move to your tables. I'll tell you where to go as they come up. Again, the cover sheet on these goes over some of the rules that I've already discussed with you guys, like the battle zones and reinforcement tokens, and then you have the mission right up within. So first up, battle zone one, JR. Missile defense station, Zeta 1-9, down on that end. I like the theme. It's all in one place. It's easy to read. They're in iron hand. And then, searchable. You can, it's searchable. If the person does a PDF, right? <clears throat> then, I also like using your Gmail. So these are the corn world eaters here, trying to hold off everybody from this uh, launch bay. And every round that they hold off, we're launching ships down to the other planets. I'll show you those in a bit. Here I am. This is where my reserves walk in off of this corridor. And blitz here. I just lost a squad of berserkers to these wolf, this wolf lord and these guys that are coming. They're starting to tear it up. Wolves are. Yep. Wow. Well, reinforced by the there. Is it, you got no corn over here. More corn over here. Black Templars coming in here. He's got Lord Zufor and that guy. No, I'm not. And Karn. No, I'm not. More Black Templars. No, I was hoping he'd hit the Dark Angels there. I thought that was a bit dick to do. And then here we have our Thousand Sons contingent, our Zeech contingent, guarding the the big guns. And they're being put under a bit of pressure by these Dark Angels here that have come out of here. This beautifully painted Sessus Assault Ram. That one's yours, right? And your name is? Mike. Mike. Mike, how long did it take you to paint up the Cestus? Far too long. Far too long? I'm painting one up now, that's why I ask. It's a beautiful, beautiful version of it. It looks awesome. Are you having fun yet? I am. It's a great game. It's amazing. The board looks amazing. Speaking of the board, here's Jordan, the maker of the walls, such as this one, which look incredible. Thank you. Can you give us just like a quick overview of how you made them? Yeah, I mean, the key was uh, building a master panel mm -hmm. and then casting it up. So it's all cast in resin. It's all uh, actually... <clears throat> well, the, the fronts of the walls no, are cast not, in resin. They're resin. They're the, uh, it's like this super plaster stuff. Oh, really? I, used the, I went on the... First, first starts? I went on his like molding guides. Are you, through that. are you using the dental cement? It's not cement actual stuff? dental stuff. Oh, okay. Someone had recommended, I guess it's like Durham's Rock Hard Water yep. Buddy at a yep. hardware store. I went through like three cans of it, but it's awesome. really cheap. You don't awesome. have to buy like 50 pounds of dental stuff. So. Yeah, I have actually but a bunch of that. It was a lot of casting. I mean, some I beautifully painted <laughs> Zeech stuff here. Hopefully they can hold out quite a bit longer while the uh, servitors here continue to fire the guns. Absolutely awesome looking board. Let's go take a look at some of the other boards and what's going on there. So over here we have part of the planet. What part of the planet is this, JR? You don't even know what part of the planet you're defending? That's why you're losing. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm looking at you with a camera in my face. <laughs> no, this uh, is the uh, missile defense battery. The missile defense battery. And does this mean you've launched one missile so far? Um, well, no. Every turn I control this with uh, troops, missiles go up to the ship. Okay, that's what hit us. And blasts up there on your port. Right, and those, uh, those blasts on our ship act as kind of the uh, Zomortalis... Um, what do you call board it, Jeff? Effects. Yeah, the board effects, kind of oh, from yeah. Imperial Armor 9. And then your guys, since Matt's been controlling the cannons, an or uh, basically Earthshaker cannon orbital bombardment comes nice. down and hits on us. Oh, nice. I, I, I killed a whole, almost a whole Crusader. I wasn't aware that that was going on. Okay, over here we have Iron Warriors, which are just awesome looking. 
I see why Jeff wants to do Iron Warriors. They're a great army. And in particular, it's nicely kitted out. It's the whole three dimensions. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's his. That's what's acting as his defiler. That's his defiler. And here we have Black Templars. These are Jordans, right? Yeah. These are beautiful Black Templars, actually. Jordan really knows how to paint his stuff. Beautiful Emperor's Champion right there, too. That's actually oh. my Emperor's Champion. Oh, is it? It's painted for me. Oh, okay, got it. And this is looking awesome here. This looks ominous, actually. Well, this is actually right here. Oh, that's even worse. <laughs> but it's about to get jump trooped. And then here, here we have the fabled Salamanders. These are Jeff's Salamanders. Yes. When did you do the flames? That's not mine. That's not yours? Oh. Awesome. This is yours, though. This Land Raiders. Yeah, that's yeah. See, that looks good, Pete. And you say your stuff isn't painted. Oh, what do we got coming in your backfield here? Award winning demons. Oh, yeah. These are actually Pez's demons. Yes. Pez, who won our Hobby Progress Challenge, actually. The, the, big, the big KR case from our Hobby Progress Challenge. You can see all kinds of explosions, flames. Beautiful looking demon army here. Again, still Pez's stuff. And nice. Look at this. Hellblade here. Uh, Say hi, Pez. <laughs> hi, Pez. <laughs> uh, what are you thinking so far of the event? It's awesome. This is, uh, this is how it's supposed to be. This is how 40K is supposed to be, right? Yeah, this is incredible. Is. This is incredible. In fact, let's take a look at his, his new demon prints right here. Demon prints? Yes. Okay, demon prints. I love the sword on it. Nice Zeech. Kind of feel to it right there. That's pretty awesome. Then here's Tom's corn. We have a lot of corn represented here uh, today. Yeah. How are you? Are you having a good time so far? Great time. This is awesome. Awesome. How about you? Great time. And your name is Ross. Ross. Ross, and you're playing. The blood bearers. The blood bearers, which are really, let's face it, one step away from chaos anyway. Here, <laughs> here. You, you mean, should just. You mean the oldest and most loyal of all the Space Marines? That's what I heard. You should just join the winning team right now. I'm just saying. Yes, I'm on the winning team. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Awesome looking, actually old uh, uh, model here that's turned into a uh, ball predator, right? Bale yeah, predator. Yeah, that's the old school one. It's pretty awesome looking. Where's this guy? He hasn't come He's, in yet? Uh, yet He's to, yet to deep What round are you in? This is the beginning of turn two. You're in the beginning of turn two. All right, let's take a look at the other table. And the final other table here. We get more Dark Angels. And this is pretty clever. These are uh, these are Chaos Drop Pods, uh, Dreadclaw Drop Pods, which are modeled from the regular uh, Drop Pod model, but inverted with the the wings here, so it makes for a pretty good uh, dread claw drop pod. It's pretty nice, actually. It's pretty clever. We have another thing that we have launched from our launch bay. And down here, we have Dark Angels engaging the uh, Keeper of Secrets and all this. These are some beautifully painted Slanesh models, too. Who did the Slanesh models? You painted the Slanesh models? And you are? Paul. Paul. Paul, I particularly like the nipples on the Slanesh models. I just want to point oh, that out. Yeah, I... Uh... <laughs> I have quite a few of the old ones still. <laughs> they're they're the awesome looking. Ones, yeah, so. They're absolutely awesome looking. I'm, Are you big on Slanesh stuff? Or? Yeah, I'm all Slanesh. Because we have, in in Redding and Chico area, yeah. actually I don't live there anymore anyways, but there were there was already a Corn Urgle and Zeech player, so I did Slanesh. Awesome. That's awesome. And is this what you're fielding right here? Yeah, this, this is, is my you. main army. Uh, it's the Pyre, which is an old chapter from the Renegades in the pre- Actually, they're in the current codex. These are awesomely painted, too. Uh, and then there's really no story for them, so I made them all on Ash. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Which works out well. And I like it. I like plus on Ash, as it turns out. That's pretty pretty awesome. And who are we fighting against here? Ian. Hey. And you are fielding? Raptors. Raptors. That's right. You've been working on your Raptors chapter. I like saying Raptor chapter. Raptor chapter? Yeah. Rhymes. Oh, look at this. <laughs> not, we got the uh, boarding assault marines here. Those are pretty awesome looking, actually. I traded mine away. <laughs> That was a mistake. <laughs> I traded it for Captain Zakarius. Oh, okay. Which is pretty nice. The old one. This is pretty awesome. This is uh, looking actually not good for you here, Raptors. No, yeah, chapter. it just kind of uh, blew up this whole building and killed everybody inside. Holy crap. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because it turns out being inside a building is actually pretty dangerous. Yeah, yeah, yeah it is. So when it blows up, they kind of got to jump off the roof and fall <laughs> six inches falling down. Are you having a good time? Yeah. I'm what about you? You having a good time? Oh, yeah. 
This is, this is pretty only, epic. This is so only far. like my fourth game of six. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> And then here we have Josh's right, so let's, uh, let's do uh, damage. Like Josh I just played recently as well. So if I funnel him that way, he has a beautifully painted yeah. demon army too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so against Andrew, the commander. What's up, man? Thumbs up? Yeah. Are you having a good time, Andrew? I am. I'm learning a lot. Uh, the new chaos models are real different, so it's good. It's good. I don't play anymore, so it's real fun to get back in the game. These are your awesomely painted Terminators we've and talked about in the past. To this beautiful. Of course, my favorite model of all is Chaplin. Okay. If you guys are here, okay. 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 I don't remember who I'm forgetting, but anyway, you can see the, the layout here, the tables is working really well. We have about 18 players. It's a whole lot of fun. And uh, yeah, I'll film more as we, as we finish more. This is just amazing fun. I can't tell you how much. All right, well, it's the end of the Mystere incursion. Chaos finally held it off here. And we're looking at some of the last battles here between this Demon Prince and Dreadnought. If I know my chaos, I know how that's going to go. Chaos pretty much ruling here. These uh, reserves here came in just a little too late. Awesomely painted space wolves, though. Just absolutely beautiful. You know, I don't know if you can make out some of the, uh, the battle damage and stuff that's painted on these guys. It's just beautiful. Uh, Nyal did a lot of damage there. Looking over here. Thousand Suns taking a beating here. Yeah, it's like a draw here as they have some guys in our um, objective here. But a lot of death here. Pretty awesome. Let's go take a look at some of the other tables and we'll see how Jeff did. Over here, we're still dealing with the Iron Warriors moving their way in. It looks like they're still holding that off. But it's pretty much wrapping up right now. Here we got Pez's. Demons have just decimated. You can see all the fire and smoke as Jeff's uh, salamanders have just taken a beating here. So, and then over here we have uh, still some demons fighting the what in essence are blood angels. Pretty brutal. Jeff made a good point here. He said, uh, you know, the salamanders were the offensive unit out of these three Imperial players, and that's really backwards. They should have been defensive when you have Black Templars guarding one thing over here and Blood Angels defending another thing over here. So really kind of backwards in a way, but that's good to know. And then over here, what was the end result here? Guys, this table's empty. What happened? Chaos wins. Ch chaos wins. Okay. That sounds like, yeah. Sounds like it might have been a little weighted in Chaos's favor. Over here, what happened with the uh, with the draw. gate? Complete draw here? No, you held the gate? Technically, it was a draw. It was a pretty good draw. 53 HQ over. At the last second. Bloodthirster came down and knocked on the door in the last yeah. turn. He's like, I'm here. Blood, Bloodthirster opened the door? I brought my Bloodthirster. He knocked the door. Oh. There was scout sergeant. Scout sergeant pulling inside. You were supposed to leave your models on the table. Why are you guys taking them off? You already took the shot. All right. And then what happened here? Oh, I know what happened here. I talked to the commander already. It wasn't looking good. Uh, it was an epic draw. It was an epic draw because oh, no. the poker chip let me Oh, let you bring cheat. in reserves. Yeah. <laughs> I, well, I think that was actually a good thing. I think games would have been over a lot faster without the being allowed to bring yeah, reserves yeah, back in. So did some people over here. Only that table. You weren't the only one. But by getting a second poker chip, I got to, like, cheese out a draw. Oh, well, there you go. cheese out a draw, but just, like, I got to... Pretty awesome. Okay, so overall, game was fantastic. Absolutely want to thank Josh and Scott and uh, Jordan for doing the whole thing. Uh, but we have uh, what's really cool. I think probably the most epic part of the game was uh, Aaron, the opponent I was playing, who was playing Space Wolves, was uh, fielding a Wolf Lord. 
and he and his power sword almost took down Zufor, took him to one point, while Zufor took him to one point. I just had a really bad round of rolling attacks. But in the end, Zufor pulled it out and punched the Wolf Lord in the face and finished that combat off. That was abs Everybody came over and was kind of watching that. So overall, this has been an amazing event. I want to thank the guys who ran it, and uh, I would love to do something like this. This is, this is what 40K is meant to be. Let's take a quick look and see how this winds up. Oh, I see a missing dreadnought, which is he not exploded and took out some cultists' blood sacrifices. This is not to be unexpected, though. Did you go with the double strength attack there? Yes. Yeah, of Smash. course you did. Yep. There it goes. Well done. All right. Looks like a chaos route. Whether it was painting new models, thank you, Ross, just for this game, or bringing an army or supplying a buddy with models. Everybody brought something to the table. This is a 100% a group event. And again, thank all of you for, for participating and bringing what you brought to the table. So I want to give a chance, get a chance to give you guys something back for contributing what you guys brought to the table. And it's slanted, of course, because at the end of the day, somebody has to win and somebody has to lose. But luckily, it didn't really matter what you did on your own. It was the culmination of all tables. And based on the results of all the tables, Chaos victory. Yeah! So first up... We're taking silence. I'll give you last, right? Just to save you time, since you're holding something. Oh. It's Carl's holding it. <laughs> All right. So, Tom Hall, come on up. Yeah. You are officially a champion of chaos. And there's your oh, bad nice. dog tag. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Josh Sawyer, get on up here. Can you hold this one, bro? And these dog tags are an opportunity for you guys to check and keep these as like a veteran status. For every event we have, I'm going to put one of these out. And so more games that you attend for these, we're only doing once a year then you guys can collect these dog tags to show your guys' veteran status at our events. Nice. Paul Anderson. <laughs> also a champion of chaos. All of you guys, champions of chaos. It's amazing. It says so awesome. It says so right there. Yeah. Cannon and you become a champion. <laughs> Jody Propoller. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's the last yeah, moment. Know where Trader 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 Jeff, Trader. last minute price. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming, man. Yeah. I appreciate yeah. it. Man. That's that hell of a drive today. Yeah. <laughs> Matt Umkin. All right, Matt. Justin Teitzel. <laughs> Anthony Hanner. Yeah. 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 This is all your fault, because if I had it my way, this would have been a more for work. Next year. <laughs> <laughs> Next. <laughs> and Carl, this is for you. Yeah. <laughs> it was a moral victory. <laughs> Jordan Nichols. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Ian Chapman. Martyr. <laughs> yeah. A martyr if I've ever seen one. <laughs> Almost like he had them pre-printed. <laughs> Glenn Davis. And a special thanks goes out to Glenn, without whom we would not have had this venue. 
Thank you, Glenn. Hey. <laughs> What's that? This is Space Wolf Cheater. Space Wolf Cheater? Uh, I got home. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming. <laughs> All the way from Phoenix, Arizona. And Mike Geraldo. Yeah. All right, Mike. You got the ball. You're up to victory. Yeah, oh, yes. So behind the scenes, though, though the Imperials lost, the Dark Angels got what they were really here for, which was the fallen Contemptor Dread on board the Relentless Despair. So, loss for the Imperials, win for the Dark Angels. Man! <laughs> but you guys don't know that. It's I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, again, thank you everybody. Thank you. And uh, I hope to be doing something okay, almost like this next year. So it's uh, What, not next month? <laughs> <laughs> hey. but, but going forward, so you guys know, we're rolling in after this. Chaos is out the door. That's Anthony's ballpark. It's all you, brother. Uh, we're rolling into our Xenos campaign, and from here on out, uh, the storyline for GC G3 Santa Cruz is a orc law and uh, some shenanigans with the Necrons in the background. So it'll be the Xenos front of the war on Gothamos, and chaos is all you, Anthony. Thanks again, everyone.